Week six of the college football season is in the books. And you talk about draft radar. Who's on the radar? Who played well and who will be a good fit for the Carolina Panthers? We'll tell you next on the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. You are locked on NFL Draft. Your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Let's get locked. Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on Twitter at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout over with the Draft Network. Guys, happy Monday, and thank y'all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out to you guys for being our everydayers, but I got to kick it over to my partner in crime, my brother, Keith Sanchez, Mr. LSU. You can find him on Twitter at the Talent Code. Can you talk to him, baby? What's up, Locked On family? This is Keith Sanchez, senior draft analyst with the Draft Network, man. The 2019 national champ with those LSU Tigers, man. But you know why we're here? Why we're here to bring you that championship level content surrounding the NFL Draft 24 7, 365. This is your dynamic duo talking about myself, talking about DP, Damian Parsons, man. We are here 24 7, 365, and we are here every Monday for you, right? So, DP, we're getting this thing started, man. And you know what our Monday shows are, right? We're talking about the weekend slate. Start with college football draft read, all right? Which players performed well, and these players should move up certain teams' draft boards, right? So we do our draft read all seg- segment. Then we have our stock up, stock down. Like we say, some players play well, they move on up the stock grade, right? And then some players don't play as well, and they start to trickle down their board. So DP, we're going to knock those two out and then bring in Coach DP, bring in Coach K, and we're going to hand out the game ball. So DP, why don't we go ahead and kick this thing off with our title sponsor first and then get into this draft read off. Today's episode of Locked On NFL Drive is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, brand new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Draft radar, Keith, and I know some people are like, wait a minute, what happened to draft scenario, guys? Yeah, we just changed the name, all right, because we, we, we did some shuffling. <clears throat> we did some shuffling. Relax. It's the same thing. We just talked, you know, named it different. But Keith, when I look at draft radar, right, and, and you think about a team that we've talked about kind of over the past two weeks when we got to the NFL stuff, Bryce Young, the Carolina Panthers, right? They're winless right now. And, you know, they're they're, they're winless, and, and or they have been. And what has been one of their biggest problems? Wide receiver. Keith, Jermaine Burton from Alabama, a guy that we were really high on coming into last summer. He was leaving Stetson Bennett. He was going to play with Bryce Young. We were expecting him to have – Big time breakout performance. It didn't go like that last year, but but this weekend, Keith. Oh, he woke up. I don't know if he was in the deep slumber, but oh, he's awoken now. This young man came out there, Keith. Nine receptions, 197 receiving yards, two touchdowns versus Texas A&M, and M, and in the best game of Jalen Milrow's career, passing the football right over 300 yards, multiple touchdowns. The deep ball was there and Jermaine Burton was a big part of that Keith but what, what I what I loved and what I reason why I think he'd be a good fit and I'm not saying that as, as a number one right I'm talking day two so maybe third roundish like you first of all Carolina Panthers maybe you double dip it wide receiver because it you need it right this is a big big need for y'all but the ball skills the speed the toughness um be able to get open on in breaking crossing routes stuff like that I think Bryce and again, he's a he, he's also used to Bryce, right? He played with Bryce. He knows what Bryce is looking for as a quarterback, what he wants, how he how Bryce thinks, because he's been in the locker room and meeting rooms with him last year at Bama. I think he could be a nice solid fit for those Carolina Panthers. Yeah, DP, I, I actually like that, and, and it's it's important, like you said, to put it in context, right? Like we're not talking about handing out a first round grade and taking them. Well, first of all, y'all don't have a first a first round draft pick. Talking about Carolina, so yes, that part true. That, that part can't be executed, but potentially second, third round, and and we've seen these players or the the, the quarterbacks get matched up with their former quarterbacks before, right? Well, the quarterbacks get matched with their former wide receivers with the Tua, Tag Velo, and Jalen Waddle, and then the, the Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith kind of, you know, relationship, and we've seen it and seen it work, right? So you're talking about with Bryce Young, I think that really would work bringing in the re- a reinforcement of, like we said, this, this is a guy in Jermaine Burton who 
it appeared that it was just the details, but it appeared that it was just mental because he he knows how to get open, right? He can get open. You're talking about the underneath routes and you know the the the, the timing and tempo and and how to set up defenders. He does all of that stuff. It was just the consistency of like one of those situations where you why why you ran the wrong route or why you didn't cut it off at eight or like catch the football when it hits your hands. Right. And it seems like he's putting it all together now because you, you talked about it DP last summer, right. When we went into the, the, to the heading into the season, I had Jermaine Burton with a second round grade because I thought the talent was there when you really watched it. And just, it appeared that it was almost like the, 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 the lights were too bright. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure what it, what it was for him, but he just didn't perform well last year. So we'll see how this thing goes this year um, with him. But DP, when you're talking about draft radar, I got, we talking about Jermaine Burton. He's a wide receiver. He's probably 185, 190 pounds. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to talk about a big 330 pound defensive tackle from the University of Texas. Yes, they lost the game, DP. But when we're talking about draft radar, I'm looking at some of these teams, DP, that that's when you're talking about teams are able to run the football on them. Uh, you you have at the bottom of the pack, which is surprising enough, you have the you have the Pittsburgh Steelers, you have the Green Bay Packers, which we all know they'll take a swing on a first round defensive player, right? With no issue. Um, and then I'm, I'm looking at other teams like Las Vegas, right? Like they, 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 there needs to be some type of identity in Las Vegas too. They tried the Neil Farrell um, plug and replace situation. And that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with the Raiders. Uh, Cause they tried the Neil Farrell plug and replace situation DP um, where he was supposed to come in, but then they wind up trading him to the Kansas city chiefs. I think right before the season started, as the season started with that whole situation with Chris Jones, then you think about them drafting Tyree Wilson, then Chandler Jones issue has been, you know, well documented, right? So this defensive front is really hurting outside of Max Crosby. So I think you start to kind of start building foundational pillars. And I, I don't mind drafting defensive tackles because they're usually a position where it translates, right? Where, where yeah. their skill set translates easily. Like you can take what they do in college and put it in the field. And it's just a big boy that that he's physical. Um, he 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 has a, a violent temperament to him, right? And that's exactly what you want from a defensive tackle. I think he's scheme versatile in the sense of the fact that he can play in a four three or a three four. Um, and and he's just a, he's he's gonna be a temple set. I, know, I like that, Keith. And crazy enough, you said 330. He's actually listed at 362. I, I trim, listen, I tried to trim a couple pounds off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I didn't, didn't want to go too heavy. I said, look. You said, I'm trying to get him ready for the combine. I'm going to trim some, it's, some it's, weight it's, off it's, of him. <laughs> it's, it's in season. You know, he probably dropped a couple pounds, right? He, I mean, know, running cardio on, on the field, yeah. I wouldn't doubt it, right? <laughs> now, I, I, and, and to your point, though, Keith, this is a guy I'm really high on, man. Like, I'm really high on sweat. You know what I mean? Because well, also, even though he's like a, a very strong point of attack guy, he mm -hmm. collapses the pocket quickly. Yeah, you does. know what I'm saying? Like, it, and I wonder if he's one of those guys, DP, because they just had a video going viral on Twitter where it's talking about Vita Vea. That's what I thought about. Mm. I thought about Vita Vea. I was about to bring up Jordan yeah. Davis. Okay, okay, that's not bad neither. That's not bad either. I think and, Jordan. Uh, I think Jordan might test better than him, of course, because Jordan's yeah. a, just a unreal athlete. But just what they both. What they do, v, I love the Vita Vea or Jordan Davis. I think that's a good comp for him. They um and the 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 what I oh the point I was making was that because you're talking about his movement skills, right? And I remember Tavondre Sweat when you know obviously when I was recruiting at LSU and, and you know bringing up these different players and watching them and stuff like that. I don't believe he was that big. I, I, if I remember correctly, like Tavondre Sweat might have been. 285 pounds coming out of college, I'm mean, coming out of high school. So he may be a guy that put on good weight. So then that way he can still move well, right? Now he's just operating at 300 something pounds, but he's still able to move well to, to your point, DP. No, he, he's a, he's a physical, just like, he's a really good player, man. And I, I tweeted out about him. Yes. You know, you know, uh, on Saturday, you know, while the games were being played, I'm like, listen, man, like he, he's, <laughs> this is a guy you want to get on your team. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how it goes. Excited to really dive into yeah. the tape and, and really, I, really get to, like I just watch looked, him, watch him. You just, just him. Nobody yeah. else. I just looked it up, DP, and I, I knew I wasn't tripping. I'm like, I remember this guy. He was listed at 260 pounds on 247 his senior year. So what? Yeah. Yes, I, I knew because he was a defensive end. That's why when you was telling me he was a nose tackle when we talked a couple weeks ago, I'm like a nose tackle. I'm like this guy was a DN in in high school. So that is but, crazy. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Texas is putting their weight on man. There's a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of beef. You know, a whole lot of beef out there, man. They the barbecue, they're doing their thing in Texas. Everything's big about, in Texas, including yeah. the hundred. <laughs> 
but he's definitely Akeem, doing well. Before we transition, I will real uh-huh. quick. Denver Broncos, a f- draft radar. I know K- they're they're what one and three. I know Caleb is around. Everybody, everybody's trying to tank for Caleb. Every fan base right now. If the team doesn't look good, let's just screw it and tank for Caleb. But the Broncos, if they don't get a chance to get Caleb, I think they can finish off with this guy. And and and, and this is my guy here, Keith Drake. Mate, you talk about an uh, elite performance on on, on Saturday this past weekend. Know. 33 or 47, 442, four total touchdowns. Keith, like the arm talent, the pocket mobility, the off schedule, off script plays, off platform, the, the eye manipulation. I'm yeah. telling you right now, he has developed, he's developing before our eyes. Even like I know the numbers don't show as well as they did last year, but as a quarterback, I am seeing a higher level of nuance from him this season than I did even last year when the numbers were outrageous yeah dp and i'm gonna hurry up real quick i know we have to transition but um no i, I agree when you talked about the numbers i remember you tweeted he was like this is my qb2 and then somebody was like oh he only has three touchdowns right but yes. then when you look at the other stats i think his completion percentage was like first in the nation or, or it was really high he had like 75 percent of like first in the acc so this is a guy that's showing that he's really accurate You're like yeah the touchdowns aren't coming right but there's always a story behind that and that's maybe a reason why you watch the film right and we just so that way you can back up and figure out these situations hey, man. <laughs> you know i try to tell these people that yeah yeah that was all good man but let's keep this thing going let's keep it flowing man we about to transition to what to our stock up stock down so find out who's moving up our draft board and who's moving down our draft board coming up next 2023 NFL season is underway, so it's time to snap into the action this season with the NFL with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Guys, right now, brand new customers, I'm talking today type of new customers, can get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed when they place a $5 bet. Let me repeat myself. If you place a bet of $5, 5 bucks with FanDuel as a brand new customer, you will get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. And guys, you're going to love this, right? Because the app is super easy to use. They have a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. So all you have to do is follow me here. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with FanDuel, guys. I'm telling you, all spreads, player props, all of it. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season because FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. The stock market is back. You know, it, it opens every Monday, every Monday here on the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. And keep, when you think about stock up, stock down, man, we always talk about who you need to be buying. We only talk about the good things first. And Keith, we talked about, you know, North Carolina quarterback Drake May at the end of segment one, right? At the end of draft radar. His top receiver right now, yes, Tez Walker was just reinstated, so he's got to get acclimated to this offense. But Nate McCullum, Keith, uh-huh. I'm telling you right now, I- I've liked this kid's game ever since he was at Georgia Tech. He was at Georgia Tech with Jeff Sims, and he was Jeff Sims' number one option. And when I, I remember w- sitting around, you know, during the summer or, or you know, this offseason, and when I got the word that, listen, he's going from Georgia Tech, North Carolina, I was happy. I was like, Drake, man, he's going to fill kind of that Josh down slot movement Z receiver type of role. And he has two big games this year, Minnesota, 15 catches, 165 yards in the touchdown. And then this past weekend against Syracuse in a blowout game, seven for 135, averaging close to 20 yards per catch in that game. But his ability to get open, his toughness, he reminds me a little bit of, um, remember Amari Rogers coming out of Clemson. His body yeah, type, yeah. the way he wins, is very similar to me, Keith. And for teams that I think, as we're seeing the the, you know, we I think we talked about this this past draft cycle, right? Kind of getting rid of the misnomer around the slot receiver that hey, it's such a oh, if you're deemed only a slot, it's a negative on you. Not anymore because you see that NFL offenses are going to this. another name that he reminds me of Christian Kirk. He reminds me a little bit of Christian Kirk as well. So a guy that can get open vertically up the seam. He runs good routes. He's tough, short-handed, and he's not afraid so, to work across the middle of the field. 
stock up for Nate McCullum, man. I want to ask you, DP, what what is the explosive element that you feel for him? Like when you, when you watch him and you know you you see him on film, what the, is there like? Because Christian Kirk was a, a a a rather fast wide receiver, right? Like he was known as being a deep threat coming from what from Texas A and M. Uh, even out of high school, out of Arizona, right? Uh, does he have that type of explosive element to to his game? You believe? I think so, Keith. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. even with uh, like I said, even with Jeff Sims, he was one of their best deep re- deep threats in that offense, and it's been that kind. Of, it's been that way this year. You know, with um, with Drake May, right? You know, and, and especially that, that Minnesota game, working out of the slot, you can motion him around. But I th- I believe he has that speed that once he and he's very sudden. And nuance in terms of how he attacks leverage and coverage to where okay, I get you off your spot, I get your feet movement, get you out of my way, right? Clear my path, and now I can go and, and hit vertical. And once he does that, he does a good job keeping that separation, right? Then tracking the ball uh, down the field as well. So I think he does bring that that type of um, deep ball speed and element. I don't think he's gonna be like a four three guy, but four four, like four four five, four four eight, somewhere in there. I think that's that those are times that I'm expecting him to run whenever he does go to the combine. Okay, and that's that's not bad at all. I can't wait to uh, to get into him and, and to watch him and everything. You know what Drake may be in a quarterback, right? The volume is going to be there as far as with his production. I'll be able to bring on DP, my stock up, right? If I ask you who is RB1, right? You're gonna sit there and that that face was what I don't really know, right? And and, right. and so my stock up is going to go to a running back that have helped put his name back into the circle, right? Has been fairly quiet thus far um through 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 this campaign, this 2023 campaign, and that is running back for Florida State, Trey Benson, DP. And Trey Benson, he balled out this past week, right? He went from looking up 11 carries for 200 yards, two touchdowns, with a long of an 85 yard run touch, 85 yard touchdown run on um, where you was able to see that he really took off right he really he really mm-hmm. took off he showed that explosiveness and when everybody talks about it and this is probably something i'm going to repeat throughout this you know this whole draft process but he's one of those high hip runners right where he has yeah. long, longer stride longer legs and he he reminds me of tj yeldon dp i, I get tj mm-hmm. yeldon vibes from alabama uh, when when I watch Trey Benson. So it's a matter of him stacking it together because, like I said, all of this goes back to the conversation of who is RB1? If we have no idea. So if, if if you can put together and string together games like that where you're rushing for 200 yards and you're able to garner the attention of people, then I think your name is going to consistently move up the draft board. So for me, it's definitely – he helped his stock because I think that he was sitting in a good spot entering the season. And then I think it it kind of was slowly trickling down, right? It didn't fall off. It was slowly trickling down because there wasn't an emergence from him. But then now you're seeing him pick it up, and hopefully he's able to finish out the rest of the season. And if Florida State makes a playoff run, he can be a key pillar. So I'm gonna go Trey Benson stock up. I, I like that, Keith, because that that was he 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 was a name that kind of started going under the radar as the season was going on, where no one was really talking about him. And with the running back situation not kind of being in flux, I like that name, pull. And, yeah, there's the open field speed that he, on that long run. Oh, yeah, he, he knows how to separate. And crazy enough, for a bigger back like that, he returns kicks too, which is yeah, real scary to think about. You know what I mean? As a kicker, if you get all the blocks solidified and you the last line of defense and this big boy is running your direction, running hey, man, you. good luck. You know what I'm saying? Good luck, Keith. But – um, I got one more for stock up, and then I got two for stock down. Quarterback, I think he's at, he was at LSU, then he went to Auburn. Now he's at Texas State. They upset, you know, uh, Baylor week one. Man, TJ Finley, the big six foot, what was he, six foot six, six foot seven, 255. Keith, when I look at just looking at his numbers this season, right? This season at Texas State. 129 completions off of 176 attempts, 73.3% completion percentage. Right now, so far this season, set over 1,700 yards, passing almost 10 yards uh, per attempt, 12 touchdowns to two interceptions, Keith, and he's looked good. He's looked good, man. Like, just I was watching some, some, of, the, some of the stuff on him last night, and I was like, I was watching the Baylor tape. I was like, wow, okay. The, the arm is still there, but the pocket movement form was there. The confidence. He just looked – we always talk about change of scenery for guys. I felt like that was big for him, right? Yeah. That so, was, he went to an under-the-radar situation because I didn't know he was at Texas State until I started looking him up. And I was like – and I looked at his numbers. Let me turn on some tape and see what's going on. And he's playing good football, man. 
Yeah, DP. And this is this is a guy that I, I was really close to, right? Like the entire family he has a little brother that's playing at, at Southeastern right now, playing wide receiver, tight end. Um, but recruited him the whole entire time, spent a lot of time with him at LSU. And LSU, that, that was that whole weird situation with him. And then remember, it was like the Max Johnson type situation where yeah. TJ came in and then he threw for like three, four hundred yards against South Carolina. Then it was he had to play like Alabama and Auburn and those tough teams. Then Mac Johnson came in. And then I thought this, this is what I thought. And that's why, you know, when you're talking about like these these guys hopping in the transfer portal, you have to go to the right situation. You hit it right on the head. DP. Like he goes to Auburn, right? Auburn where they want to run the football. They want their quarterbacks to be athletic. No wide um, receivers. Yeah, no wide. The, the huge, that's the biggest part is that there wasn't the wide receivers there. So now he gets to Texas State. And they're they're running an offense that's kind of fit around him. And you're seeing arm talent. His arm talent, I and I'll put this against anybody. His arm talent is probably gonna be top five in this class. Like he he has, I watched it every single day. He has an explosive arm. The dude can just yes. flat out rip the football. Um, so he, he's gonna be fun. DP and him being six six is definitely gonna attract some people's attention. It's gonna be rather fun. Um, but I'm I'm gonna throw in one other name real quick for just stock up, and, and that is. That is Jaleel Farouk, DP, the wide receiver from Oklahoma, right? And he just he, – he balled out. He did his thing, right? When you're talking about a rivalry game, you're talking about who is going to step up, who is going to make plays. He did both of those, right? And we're talking about Dylan Gabriel, the quarterback, and we talked about it on Saturday, right? That's what we said. We was like, man, we're going to pick Texas, but we would not be surprised if Oklahoma Correct. wins this game because it is – one, is going to be a very close game, and then two, is just going to come down to people making plays. And Jaleel Farouk was one of those guys that made plays in this Red River rivalry. So I'm going to go stock up on him just yet another name, right? Because like we said, we, over the past couple of drafts, DP, it's been five wide receivers going in the first round, right? And right now we, we have two, right? Like we, we, we know there's probably two – well, three. I, I'll, I'll probably say Marvin Harrison Jr., Keon Coleman, Malik Neighbors, right? So we have right. three. But it's like who's gonna be that other the other two, right? The other two to three wide receivers. And with Carolina, we've seen Jonathan Mingle come out of nowhere. He he went the entire draft process under the radar, right? And went in the second round. So Jaleel Farouk is somebody we definitely should be talking about because they stock up on him. And I think he could, he can ball out. And, and this offense is gonna allow him to get the production. You called it, Keith. You called it, you know, on, on the Saturday live show. That's why y'all should tap in because you know we we talk about these things, right? But real quick, Keith, stock down. Sam Hartman did not play well. Saturday, yeah, yeah. you know, um, against Louisville, they lost the game. I think he had two touchdowns, three interceptions, or something like that. Just did not look good. The arm talent bothered me. He struggled in muddy pockets, and I know that he didn't have all his receivers because guys are, are are not healthy right now. But just things are in the NFL either. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just what it is. And I I don't I did not like what I saw. I didn't like what I saw from this guy either, Tyler Van Dyke. Keith, I know that everybody's gonna blame Mario Cristobal for that stupid decision to run the ball when you could have just kneeled down and then run out the clock, right, against Georgia Tech, which caused him to lose. But the play of the quarterback also caused him to lose that game as well. He was not good in that game, and it was very, very frustrating to sit there and watch it, Keith. And so for me, it's just like when I look at two quarterbacks, I was like, all right, like, show me something. And they showed me something, all right. I didn't like what I saw. So, <laughs> yeah. That's our stock of stock down segment, man. Uh, you know, I mean, the stock market is closed for just another week, guys, and we'll be back Monday with it next Monday. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Let's keep this thing rolling, man. We about to come up right like we said, man. We about to throw our coach's hat on. We about to hop into the locker room like we do every single week, man, and hand out those game balls. So stay tuned, man, to see what players we hand out game balls. To. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That is why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs, guys. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's very easy. Just create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs. Then add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word to the world that you're hiring. And they give you simple tools at your disposal, like screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skill set and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you like to interview and or hire. It is why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. 
time for Coach DP and Coach K to walk into the locker room and hand out the game ball. And Keith, crazy enough, I think we're handing the game ball out to the same guy. I think we're both handing out the game ball to the exact same person, and that is Oklahoma quarterback Dylan Gabriel. 285 yards passing, 113 yards rushing, two touchdowns. He threw the game-winning touchdown late in the game in the red zone, just pocket poise, control. Like, this young man was like, and even after the game, the calmness, the coolness, how collected he was in a big moment. It felt like his blood pressure was at zero. Like, Keith, I'm like, is this guy alive? Like, what is going on? There's no, there's no, there's no pulse. He's just, he was just cold blooded, man. And the, the, we talked about it, right? On Saturday, the left handed Hawaiian quarterback going to get the two of Tonga Valoa talking, everything like that. But he was surgical, throwing dots, but the athleticism. Like, not just to, to be able to make plays out of structure, Keith, but to take, to get vertical and, and, and start to leave defenders behind on long runs. Like, you see that ability with him. Man, he was, he was, he was spectacular, Keith. He really balled out. Yeah, he 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 flat out did his did his thing right in every meaning of the phrase. Like he did what he was gonna do, and you like to see that in big time games, right? You know exactly what I'm about to go DP. I talk about neck up, right? Like what are you gonna do in those those big time moments? And and he just showed up, right? And then they they obviously what they were losing the game, and then he had to go on the drive, right, to to put them ahead. And that and that was a glimpse, right? When you talk about resume games but resume situations, right? That's gonna go down. That like that's gonna help him get drafted, right? And it's not just because oh. He drove it down, you know, with, with two minutes left. It was like, no, it was like because it was a rivalry game. It was their biggest game, right? They're both undefeated, right? Like all of that mattered and came into that situation, and he still was able to get the job done. So that that definitely plays out for me. The BP, there's one other guy before we hop off of the show real quick. Yeah. I want to mention. Um, you mentioned him a little bit last week, but I, it's a it's an added added element for him, and that's LSU quarterback Jane Dance. Um, because. He went in. Uh, they were losing the game by 15 points. They came back, right, offensive explosiveness. They did their thing. And it's really what he's doing, both throwing the football, right, which I think they're schemed up, but it's like the athleticism. I'm starting to wonder how athletic is this guy, right, because I talked about it last week, and I'm like, yeah, he looks, you know, and I, and I think the word I, I use was like difficult to tackle or you know, elusive, bound, slippery. All slippery. That. That, that's what I said, right, but – it's like the acceleration is starting to be there because he's starting to run away from defenders when he pulls the ball down. So mm -hmm. you start to ask yourself, and RG3 was talking about it on a, the, the commentary, right? And he, was, he mentioned something about Lamar Jackson, right? And it's like, hmm, like, I don't know if he, <laughs> is he that athletic, right? Like, because that's different. Right. I mean, now, now body stature, they're probably the exact same body stature. They're probably both 185 pounds, right? Probably 6'2", 6'3". Um, but is he that elusive? But he's taking over games when he runs the football. It's it's becoming one of those things, DP, where you know that he's going to run the football and there's nothing that your defense can do about it. And right. so that's why I want to elevate him to that situation. And, and he shows some grit because – he and it really should have been a flag. He he ran for a touchdown. He got hit after he crossed the end zone, right? And then uh, you could tell it was something with the ribs, right? And he was he was kind of you know that 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 sharp breathing, like you you can yeah. tell, like, you know, as your lungs expand and everything, and it hits your um your diaphragm. I sound like a doctor, DP. I sound like a doctor right now. Um, but he um you know he he was grimacing a lot, but you mm -hmm. knew if he came out of that game because that game was a shootout. They were not yes. going to win, but he stayed in that football game. He made some big time runs, some big time throws, and led them to a victory that they needed tremendously. Like if Baton Rouge could not have held if LSU would have lost to Missouri let this well this past weekend. So um, I want to just give a quick shout out to Jaden Daniels. No, I I thought about even mentioning him, Keith. And I was like, man, I've talked about Jaden Daniels a lot on this show in the past couple of weeks, and for good reason because he's been balling, right? But I, I'm 100 percent with you. He's another guy that you know if we were going to give out a game ball. <clears throat> He would absolutely go to him as well because, you know, he, he he's he's just – he's taking over games. And, and, again, if this team was undefeated or maybe even just one loss, he would get a lot more Heisman love than he's gotten, Keith. So I, I'm glad you brought Jaden Daniels up. I'm glad you brought Jaden Daniels up because he he deserves as much love as, as, as possible because he's balling, rushing, throwing, arm talent, accuracy down the field. 
the slot fade is money, right? You know what I'm saying? Like you think you think it's Vegas how much he's 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 cashing in on the slot. So like he he's 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 playing well, man. And I'm happy to see it. And hope it continues. You know, maybe he can get maybe they can get back into the you know I think they got Bama knock Bama off, right? Maybe you can get to ACC championship, knock off Georgia. There's still a chance, you know. They love this for for you to be right, right? I know that is about your uh, your preseason prediction. <laughs> <laughs> but good people, man, good people. I was locked on family, man. Shout out to our everydayers, man. That is a wrap for today's show. We want to thank you for tapping in with us. Like we say, man, every single day we are at the point where we're rolling six days a week because why? Because we do Saturday lives, right? Saturday we going live at 9 30 central time 10 30 eastern time so make sure y'all tap in with us we read the comments we talk we talk back but like i said man y'all know where to talk to us man you can find me on twitter slash x at the talent code you can find dp damian parsons at dp underscore nfl man we are your go-to your dynamic duo that talk everything college nfl football and especially the draft why because everything starts with the draft the draft is 24 7 365 Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank y'all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Like Keith said, shout out to you guys for being our every dayers. Tap in with us again tomorrow. We're going to see what have we learned from the NFL. We're going to talk about rookie reports and get out, give out game balls as well on that is uh, on that also. Guys, come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.